Hi everybody, Fintan here from Dams and Cloud, and this week we are talking about Google Chat versus Slack. A discussion we have very often with customers that are either evaluating Slack or looking at replacing Google Chat with Slack. Now, firstly, I wanna talk about what is Slack. For those of you that don't know, or have been living under a non-Slack based rock. <laughs> Slack is a collaboration communication platform uh, for teams to basically share and communicate um, instant messaging from a business or enterprise perspective. There are three ways to access Slack through the web browser, um, through a mobile app or through a desktop based application. Um, because this flexibility, you can use it across any device um, and, and from anywhere. Um, teams use Slack to exchange, exchange instant messaging. They can direct message each other, they can group message, or they can use things called channels. We're gonna get into these in more detail. Um, you can also integrate it with other apps like Zoom and Trello on Google Drive. What is chat uh, or Google Chat? Google Chat is the replacement tool for Google's old Hangouts. And a lot of customers still think um, Google Chat is the sort of Hangouts tool that they remember before. Um, we find that a lot of um, Slack customers uh, who are often also using Google don't realize that Google Chat has moved on and that it has a lot of the features um, that, that Slack has and many customers can now replace uh, Slack with Chat. And so I just wanna talk about those. So um, Chat is the product that has taken over from Google Hangouts. It is a chat communication tool built for Teams. It is integrated with uh, Google's workspace um, platform and integrates with all those tools. Uh, you can communicate directly, group messaging, spaces, share files, have video calls, all that kind of stuff. So let's get into it. So the first thing that I wanna compare is price. What is the price of Google Chat? Well, Google Chat is part, as I said, of Google Workspace. Um, and for as low as five euros uh, 20 uh, per user per month, which is for um, Google Workspace Basic, um, you can, or Starter as it's called now, um, you, you can have Google Chat and you get all of the other workspace tools. You get Gmail and Drive and Calendar uh, as well as Chat. Um, Slack has a freemium model. Um, obviously this lacks um, certain features and their standard basic plan is five euros uh, 71 per user per month. So that's just for Slack, the, the messaging platform. Obviously with Google, you're getting all of the other workspace tools as well. Um, what about video conferencing? So um, video conferencing is obviously uh, built into Google via Google Meet. Um, on the basic plan, you can have 100 uh, people and on the enterprise plan, you can have now up to 500 people as well as uh, streaming as well for up to 100,000. Uh, on Slack, you can have one-to-one -one video calls on the freemium or, or free plan. And then in their paid for plans, you can have up to 15 participants. So a lot lower than, than Google on the video conferencing side. Uh, integrations, uh, although um, Google Chat is new, it does allow you to integrate with third-party tools, but at the moment, its APIs are fairly limited and Slack definitely wins out here. Um, on its standard version, uh, the free plan, it's up to, to 10 integrations and on the paid for, it's thousands. And there's a lot more integrations and their APIs for Slack have really been around for longer. It's a much more mature integration platform. Google Chat, as I said, is, 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 is relatively new. And so there's definitely less integrations there, although it is growing um, uh, qu quite a bit year on year. And now the search functionality. Search functionality, uh, they both have a search functionality. Um, chat search functionality is definitely, again, at the moment more basic, although Google are again improving uh, chat features uh, month over month. Slack has more advanced features and allows you to you know, search specific times, exclude certain channels or include certain channels uh, or individuals. And that makes it a little bit easier definitely to find things within the uh, Slack chat app compared to Google chat. But as I said, the search features within chat are improving uh, month on month and we should expect in 2022 to see some, some big improvements here. Message history. Message history in Slack, you can uh, unlimited uh, chat history in the paid for plans. In the free plan, you can have up to 10,000 recent messages. Um, in Google, the chat is saved by default. You can turn this on and off. If you turn it off, then chat messages will be deleted within 24 hours. 
but also in um, uh, Google Workspace Business Plus upwards, you will actually have Google Vault as well, which is a compliance and archiving tool, and that will keep a copy of all messages, even if a user attempts to delete them. Okay, so what about groups when it comes to both chat and Slack? Um, you can create in Google, you can create a group, which is, um, can, be, can be two or more than two people, um, and spaces. Spaces are a central place for people to both share chat messages, but also files and assign tasks and stay connected. And this has become a very, very powerful feature in Google. You can now open uh, files that have been shared within a chat directly within the uh, spaces chat window, which is very useful. Groups are more for kind of direct conversations. They tend not to have threaded um, conversations you can now, or Google are eventually releasing this year, the ability to have threaded conversations in groups, very similar to Slack. At the moment, threading is only available within spaces. Um, but as I said, this is, this is changing soon. In Slack, again, you can have the ability to have group messages and you can have channels. Channels are very similar to spaces within Google where you have a particular topic like a project or your tennis club or chess club within your company. Um, and that channel is for that specific um, specific item or, or group. You can also have external people in both of those, in both spaces um, and in channels in Slack. So adding users to a chat room. In Google, you can add people outside of your organization if that is enabled by your administrator. You can also re restrict individual spaces to be internal or external. If they were restricted to be internal, that would mean you would not be able to, or would be not possible for someone to add somebody external to a chat group, which may be something that you want to do for a particular space that is a private company space. Um, external um, guests cannot add other people to a company space. So only people within the company can add someone else to that specific space. Um, when it comes to adding members in Slack, again, you've got similar capabilities where by default, all members, but not guests, can invite other people to join a Slack workspace. Um, a workspace owner or admin can choose to remove members and change the permissions on who can send invitations within here. Um, so again, a little bit more granular control around this within Slack, but very similar capabilities in both. Next, we're going to talk about file permissions. In chat, um, if someone is you know, requesting access to a file, you can grant them access. When you share a file within Google Chat, it will actually check who's got access to it. And you can either send the link anyway, or you can add everyone within that group or that, that room or space um, to that particular file. So file permissions in Slack obviously are slightly different because in Slack, you're actually uploading the file to the chat application i.e. Slack in this case. And that will give access to whatever group or individual or channel uh, or members of that channel um, that, you know, that, that are actually in that particular space. So if you upload a file, then you're uploading it to that specific chat group. In Google, it's slightly different because you're sharing a link really to Google Drive. That's the integration that's happening there and how it actually works. You can upload an image in Google Chat but other than that, you're primarily sharing through Google Drive um, the particular file. And so the file permissions in Google, you have the ability to maybe take them away or change those permissions at a later stage. Um, with, with Slack, you're uploading the file to Slack um, unless you're integrating with another solution like Box or Dropbox or Google Drive. The last thing I wanted to mention was this new Huddle or newish feature called Huddle in Slack, which allows you to have this integrated audio experience, um, which allows for more kind of informal, spontaneous discussions. And a lot of people are, are using this, um, particularly audio only feature now has become, you know, the sort of audio only has become quite popular, people working from home, where they may want to interact with their team members, but they don't necessarily want to have a video call open all the time. And the audio is very crisp and clear. So. That's quite an interesting feature, um, and I'd recommend checking that out if, if you're not aware of it. Um, to kind of conclude, I really want to talk about, you know, when we talk about best of breed apps, like things like Slack, there are going to be features that it will have outside of um, tools like Google Chat that are part of a, a larger um, platform. And um, the, you know, good example of that is maybe 
comparing Google Drive for desktop to something like Dropbox where the Dropbox sync tool, that's all that it does. And so again, it may have features and capabilities above the Google Drive for desktop. But for most customers and most users, they can use that tool, um, you know, the, the Google Drive uh, for desktop tool fine and it does everything that they need. I think the Google Chat app now is getting to a point where for most companies, they can use it instead of using Slack or instead of moving to Slack, or indeed in some cases, we've seen customers move away from Slack and they are saving all of that money that they would be paying for um, for, for Slack as, as an additional cost to their Google Workspace environment. And the question I think companies need to ask is, are these additional fe uh, features worth the additional cost? And we, you know, we've done similar videos on, on Google Meet versus Zoom and asked that same question of, of customers. If you're um, evaluating some of these tools, yes, they may have some additional features which you know, Google may bring out um, competing features in um, you know, a few months or a year. It, is the additional um, cost worth it for this handful maybe of additional features that um, it is perceived that, that the tool has? And I think it's up to each individual company to evaluate whether it's worth it for them, uh, for their organization. So that's it for me for this week, guys. I hope you found this particular update useful. I'd love to know your opinion on Google Chat versus Slack. Have you used the two tools? Which one for you, um, you know, is the kind of go-to within your organization? Are there any comparisons that maybe we left out that you would include? Let us know in the comments below. If you're not, please subscribe to our YouTube channel or indeed on LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram if you're on there. Um, and as always, do let us know your opinion because we love to hear from